What's going on guys? Hope you're doing well and welcome to the first module of the course where we're gonna be covering variables and constants. So we're gonna start the video off with a brief introduction of what they are and then we're gonna hop into Xcode to actually get some practice with this stuff. So let's go ahead and check out our introduction now so that you guys have a better understanding of what we're doing before we start coding. So variables and constants, what are they? So essentially they allow us to store data of particular types and properties or associate a name with a particular value of a particular type. So let's take a look at this little snapshot that we have down here. We see that we have a couple variables, right? So you guys are gonna see this word var here. This indicates that we are creating a variable. This guy is our variable name. And what's on the right side of the equal sign is the value that is being stored inside of that variable. So you can sort of think of it as a container that stores a value of a particular type. So what do I mean by a particular type? Well, you can see here that these are words and then X and Y are numbers. So variables can have different data types. In this case, first name and last names are words. In programming, we refer, we refer to them as strings and then X and Y in this case are numbers. And the major difference between variables and constants is that variables can be mutated or changed and constants cannot. And we're gonna be doing some examples of that once we get started with coding. So just to do a quick wrap up here, guys, variables and constants are simply used to store data in our programs and we can store different types of data in our variables. We can have strings or words, we can have numbers, and there's a couple other different types that we're gonna cover. And I want us to hop into Xcode now and actually get started with doing some examples of this. So hopping into Xcode, guys, the first thing I wanna do is paste my notes in here about variables and constants. And I highly recommend you guys pause the video and type this out yourself. Writing things down is really just gonna help cement your understanding about the things that we are learning. And I recommend doing this for each module that we have. So to keep going, I'm just gonna delete these two comments and we are gonna start with our strings section. So we're just gonna go ahead and create a couple more variables and I'm gonna walk you guys through this step by step, literally letter by letter of what we're doing. So the first thing we're gonna start by doing is typing out the word var. So this is what's known as a keyword and it indicates to our compiler that we are creating a variable. You guys notice that as soon as I'm done typing it, it changes color. And that's because the compiler recognizes that as what's known as a keyword and it indicates to it that we are creating a variable. So then the next step is our variable name. We're gonna call it first name. And we're gonna go over why things are capitalized in this way in a little bit. Um, just stick with me, with me for now. Just know that this is done on purpose, okay? And then we're gonna say equals, and then you guys are gonna open up a single quote, and you can just start typing letters, and it will close the quote out for you. So I'm gonna say var first name equals Stefan. So now I've just created a variable called first name, and it's equal to Stefan now. So you guys might be like, okay, cool, we've created a variable, but how exactly do I use it? And what am I gonna use it for? So imagine we wanted our program to simply display our name back to us, right? So uh, we're writing a computer program now that is really just gonna show me what my name is, right? Super simple, but we gotta crawl before we can walk, before we can run. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So. Just go here on line 13 or 14, doesn't matter. And I want you guys to say print and then start typing out that first name guy. And you guys are gonna notice that this little window comes up, right? And this is what's known as your autocomplete window. So something that's really cool with programming compilers is that because we've created this as a variable, as I start typing it out, it recognizes that. And it says, oh, hey, dude, I see that you have a variable that looks really similar to this. Huh, that's kind of funny. You want it? You want to use it? All right, cool. Well, let's use it. So you guys can just hit enter. And now what this is going to do is display our name back to us. So if I hit play, it's just going to say Stefan. And you could literally change this to whatever you want. You could say Stefan Dowless. And if I hit play, it's going to display whatever the value of that is. 
I could also say print greeting, and that comes up in my autocomplete window as well. And then I'll get two print statements back, right? Stefan Dallas, hello playground. So that is just a really simple example of how variables are used, guys. They help us store information, and then we can access that information at any point in our program. And we're gonna go over more examples of how they're used in applications and real life programs and stuff like that. We're just starting really small and really simple here. So next up, I'd actually like for you guys to try to see if you could create your own variable. So it's a pretty simple task. Just see if you could create a variable called last name and set it equal to your last name and then see if you could print it out to the console. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, see if you can accomplish that and then come back once you're done. All right, so you guys should have got something that looks like this. Let me just make this my first name and then I'm gonna create another variable called last name equals Dowless. And then I'm going to go here and say print last name. Run my program and this is what you guys should have gotten back. Now, look man, if you guys got that right, you don't even need me anymore. Shut the course down, pack it up, go home, you're done. Apply to Facebook, you're gonna start making 300K a year. Send it, bro, get out of here. Why are you, leave, bye. <laughs> it's like I'm kidding. No, but if you guys really did get that right, give yourselves a pat on the back. You get your first virtual gold star. Blam! And now we're going to move on to creating some different data types with variables. So uh, we've done strings. Now I want us to move on to numbers. So let's go ahead and make a new mark here. So I'm going to say mark numbers. And we can just say var x equals two and something like var y equals three. So let's go ahead and see if we can print these out to the console. It's gonna be pretty straightforward, guys. It's just a different data type. I could say like print x and run my program and it's just gonna give me back two. Uh, the interesting thing about numbers though is that we can actually apply like mathematical operations to them. And we're gonna cover this in more detail in the next video. But for example, guys, I could say like X times Y and print that out and it would give me back six. You guys would notice that if you tried to do this with the strings, your compiler would give you an error. So like, let's see if we could do that. Let's say print greeting times first name and try to run it. And this is what it's gonna look like if you get an error, right? So it's gonna say binary operator of multiplication, that little star, cannot be applied to two string operands. That's basically just a fancy way of saying, why are you trying to multiply two strings? What does that even mean, bro? Like, what do you want for me to do there? I can't do that, sorry, bye. So anyway, um, we could replace these with X times Y, and this is just to show you guys that different data types have different capabilities or functionalities associated with them, right? So um, let's move on to the final data type. And these are the three like main types of data that you're gonna work with in programming. And it's gonna be something called a Boolean. So we're gonna say mark Boolean. And Boolean variables are cool because they can only have one of two potential values. They can either be true or false. So we could say like var having fun equals true because we're having fun together, right? I hope you guys are. And we could run our program and you guys will notice on this little right side menu. So this right side menu, guys, if you were confused, it just gives us back the value of everything we're looking at. Um, and then my console only gives me back things I actually tell it to print. So we could see having fun is true. And then I could also like print out having fun if I want to. So print having fun, play, and I can see it's true. And then so you guys can see the other side of things, having fun is false. And if you're not having fun, I'm sorry. I don't mean for it to be that way. I hope it doesn't stay that way. But you guys can see here that it prints out false for us in the console. So Booleans, once again, can have one of two potential values, either true or false. And we are gonna see how to actually utilize these different data types 
in programs and applications as the course goes on, guys. This is really just meant to be an introduction to these things, and it's supposed to start laying a foundation for the things that we are going to be building in the future. We're going to be applying these concepts when we're building programs and applications. So this is really just getting your feet wet and getting exposed to this right now. So if you're confused about how we might use these things, don't worry, that will all make sense later on in the course. So the last thing I want to cover, or actually two more things I want to cover, guys, is how we can mutate variables and what the difference between a variable and a constant is. So if you guys remember in our notes, we said that variables can be mutated or changed and constants cannot. So for example, let's imagine that I wanted to change the value of one of these variables at any point in my program. So if you guys remember... When my program compiles, it starts at line one and it starts working its way down all the way until the last line of code and it processes things in order, right? This is what's known as synchronous functionality. Things happen line by line, synchronously. So for example, let's see if we can change the value of X and Y, right? So I'm gonna go below this print statement where we're printing out X and Y and then I'm gonna say X equals four, oops x equals four and y equals six. And then I'm gonna print x and y again. So you can just highlight this guys and hit command C to copy it and paste it below. And let's run our program again. And you guys will notice that at first it's six and that's when x and y are two times three. And then we change them to four and six and then x times y becomes 24, right? So. We notice that here we have mutated or changed the value of our variables. And then when we run this same exact line of code on line 29 as we do on line 24, it uses the updated values of the variables. So we can change the values of variables at any point in our program. So something important to note guys is that you don't say like var x equals four. Um, this would indicate to your compiler that you're trying to create another variable called x. So you guys notice here that one of my errors says ambiguous use of x, and that's because the compiler is getting confused. It says, hey, you've created two variables called x. I don't know which one you want me to use. And you've basically turned your computer program into Ryan Gosling from The Notebook. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? And yeah, nobody wants that, right? So essentially, guys, what you want to do when you're modifying a variable is just access the original reference to it, right? So here is the creation of that variable. If I want to modify it, I can just say x equals 4. I don't have to say var x equals 4 because that would indicate to my compiler that I'm trying to create an entirely new variable and variable names have to be unique so that your compiler doesn't get confused and turn into Ryan Gosling. So uh, let me just do a quick recap as to how this is working before we move on with our constants and how they're different from variables. So really quickly, at the time of this print statement on line 24, when we get six back, X and Y are two and three respectively. And then uh, we print that out and it gives us six. And then on line 26 and 27, we modify X and Y to be four and six respectively. And then on line 29, it gives us back the result with the new values. So it's important to understand guys that programming does happen synchronously, meaning it processes this stuff line by line, which is why when we modify these two values and then type the exact same line of code on line 24 and 29, it has different results. So now that we've gone over that, let's move on to constants before we wrap up this video. So really quickly guys, to create a constant is very similar to creating a variable. There's really just one major difference. Instead of saying var, we say let. So I could say like let a equal five, let b equal 10. And the difference between the two is that variables can be modified or mutated and constants cannot. So. If I tried to modify A to B like 20, you guys would notice that my compiler gives me an error and say, hey, you can't modify that, right? Because A is a constant and constants by definition cannot be changed. They have to remain constant or the same. So 
Um, a quick example of when you might want to use a constant versus a variable, guys, is let's imagine you have an application that looks at the user's birthday. So like, let's have their birth year. It equals 1991. That may or may not be my birth year. I may or may not be old as hell. Just don't tell anybody. Shh, you know, keep it on the down low. But anyway, um, you would want this to be a constant because you can't change someone's birth year as much as you might want to be able to. You can't do that. That's just not how it works. So if this were declared as a variable, someone could accidentally say, hey, birth year equals 1996, and I could make myself five years younger magically, which would be pretty cool, but I can't do that, right? So that's a just a really basic example of when you might want to use a constant versus variable. And don't really worry too much about you know, when to use one or the other. We'll get plenty of practice with that throughout this bootcamp. So uh, another difference between the two guys is that constants require less memory to create. So basically what's happening every time I create a variable is my, com my computer program uses up just a tiny, tiny bit of memory. And that's why I can access those things at any point in the program. It's because they're stored in memory. My computer can remember that I've created those things. And variables require more memory because they are changeable or mutable, whereas constants require less memory because they are not mutable. So that's just another difference between the two things. So the last thing I want to cover, guys, is why we have this casing, con like naming convention with our variable names. You guys will notice that the first word is lowercase and then the second word has the first letter uppercase, which is kind of weird, but that's actually considered standard naming convention. And it's mainly for readability, right? So you guys can imagine if I made this like first name and it was all lowercase, it gets harder to read, right? So in order to make this stuff more readable, I just uppercase the first letter of every subsequent word after the first word. You do not with variable names uppercase the first letter of the first word. And there's a reason for that. There are other things in programming that get named this way. And to stick to the standard naming convention and not confuse ourselves and other coders that might have to work with our code, there is a standard naming convention and we're gonna get tons of practice with that. So just know that this is done on purpose, guys. And even though it might seem a little confusing right now or take some getting used to, I promise you guys that it will become second nature as time goes on. So that's gonna wrap it up for the first module, guys. That is just a brief introduction to variables and constants, and it's something that we are going to be using in literally every other single module that we have in this course. It's something that programmers utilize every single day. It's one of the most important building blocks of any programming languages the ability to store data in properties. So we're gonna be moving on to the next video now where we're gonna be covering operators, very similar to what we did with like X times Y. There's a bunch of different ones and we're gonna be going over that in the next video. So we'll see you guys there. Thanks for watching this one. Peace out.